All right, Mr. Johnson, you can call your first witness. The uh, defense called uh, Chandra Vanderhoek. All right, Ms. Vanderhoek, if you can come around here, please. Stand in front of that chair, raise your right hand, please. Raise your hand, please. In this matter now pending, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do, yes, All right, you can put your hand down, grab a seat. Please state your name for the record, spelling your first name and last name. Uh, Shonda, S-H-A-N-D-A, Vander Ark, V-A-N-D-E-R, space, capital A-R-K. Uh, thank you, Ms. Vander Ark. Uh, uh, you're being called to testify in your own cases. You understand that? Yes, sir. And, and to do that, you have to make sure that everyone can understand you, correct? Yes, sir. With you, uh, and knowing you as I do, I don't think volume is going to be a problem with you? Probably not, sir. Talking fast, maybe? Yes, sir, it might. Okay, so this is, uh, are you nervous? Yes, sir. This is stressful? Yes, sir, very. So you're going to be, questions going to be thrown at you, uh, fast and furious. You, you've seen how trials work, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And <clears throat> under those circumstances, you may speed up again as I do. Yes, sir. Okay. You, you may be reminded from time to time to slow down just a little bit. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Let's make sure everyone understands you. You've been sitting through this, this, this trial for the, since the beginning, correct? Yes, sir. And you were arrested for these offenses alleged back when? July 7th of 2022. Okay. So you've been living with this thing for more than... What, 18 months? 17 months, yes, 17 sir. 17 months. So you know what we're talking about, correct? Yes, sir. And you understand the allegations against you? Yes, sir. And, and that it also helps that, that you have a legal background, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, the things they said about how well you did in school and, and all those things, were all those all true? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I, I, I want you sitting there and regaling this, but, but the things about cum laude and going to law school, all that stuff is true. It was magna cum laude, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> let's start, let's go back to the very beginning. Uh, when you, it, okay. <clears throat> when did Timothy come to your care? Uh, May of 2021. Prior to that, who had physical and legal custody of Timothy? My ex-husband. Okay. And when he sent and how, how did it happen that you ended up with custody there? My ex reached out to me um, stating that Timothy was, he could no longer handle him, that he was pushing his buttons, and that he needed to send him to live with me. Okay. And you agreed to that? Yes, sir. Okay. Had you ever lived with Timothy uh, for, during his, his... When he was younger, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So uh, you, you agreed to accept him into your home? Yes, sir. And who was living in your home at the time? Myself, my husband, Adam, Paul Ferguson, and then my little man, G. G. Okay, that's what we've been calling G, correct? It's really hard to do. Yes, sir. Okay. Do the, just do the best you can. Uh, okay. So, they're all living in your home, and then Timothy joins you, correct? Yes, sir. When Timothy's joining you, did your <clears throat> ex-husband ever make any, ex any effort to transfer legal custody to you? Um, we discussed it, but he never did actually sign anything, no, sir. Okay. And without legal custody, how do you get Timothy into school? You can't. And without legal custody, how do you get medical treatment for Timothy? You can't. Did your husband at least send his, I assume he had medical insurance for Timothy, did he, he send that? He did not send me. I requested his medical uh, card, his insurance card, and he never sent it to me. Now, you heard the testimony uh, that Timoth Timothy saw the doctor in 2019. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. That was a year before you received him? Two years before I received him. <clears throat> two years before. So in the prior two years before you received him, as far as you know, based on what you heard here, your ex-husband never took him to the doctor? As far as I know, yes, sir. How do you know if he had medical insurance for this young man? He told me he did. Okay. But he never sent it to you? No, sir. Okay. Um, what was your What was your financial situation once Timothy arrived and your husband had a stroke? After the stroke, we yes. lost my husband's income, um, and it was <clears throat> paycheck to pay, not even paycheck to paycheck, almost everything was paid late. Um, I was struggling. I, I asked Paul for help with groceries sometimes because we were struggling. Okay. 
and Paul was working full time. He was working part time. He's working at, at Applebee's. At yes, sir. Okay, so he's working part time, and so what? Were you receiving any child support? No. So the entire financial burden was on you. Correct. Could you have could you have um, uh, afforded um, daycare for any of your children? Absolutely not. No. And could you have uh, uh, afforded any extra expenses other than the ones that you were providing for? No. What type of expenses were you able to provide for this family? Just basic living expenses. Rent? Yes, sir. Uh, utilities? Yes, sir. Um, uh, food? Yes, sir. Okay, that leads to the next question I have for you. You, you had monitors and, and cameras in your home, is that correct? Yes, sir. And the impression from the, from the testimony I heard is that it was for the purpose, the sole purpose of ensuring that Timothy could not get the food. Was that, is that accurate? No. Why did you have all those monitors and cameras in your home? When Timothy came to live with us, his stepmother informed me that um, they had had motion sensors. Um, they weren't as tech savvy as I was. I worked in tech, before law school, I worked in tech support for several years. Um, but they had motion sensors because, she, and she told me that she didn't sleep at night. She only slept when he was at school because he was into everything. And so, because my, my younger child, he used to, when he was about two, he would take all his clothes off. So we started putting a camera in his room. And then once we moved to the Marshall Road uh, location, it was bi-level. My husband was born with a disability. Um, my husband was wheelchair bound. So he would, we had an extra wheelchair that we kept on the upper level. That's where the master bedroom was. Um, but that way, if, the, if little man, if G was down in his bedroom, my husband could talk to him through the camera and have him come up. It was much easier. My husband could crawl down the steps before the stroke, but he didn't, we didn't want him to have to crawl up and down those steps. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and, and again, let's go back to the issue of food. Was food the only reason why you felt you had to monitor Timothy, or were there other issues? There were plenty of issues, sir. So, well, well first of all, the, what we've heard some testimony as to uh, Timothy's special needs. What were his special needs? He was on the autism spectrum, but he was completely verbal, and he was grade level in school. He was not behind the school at all. Um, he was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. He was diagnosed as bipolar and sensory processing disorder. Um, I heard Paul mention physical disability. He didn't have any, now, Timothy, when he first got there, said that he had a physical disability, and I asked his, his stepmom about it to make sure, and she said, no, he's, he was not coordinated at all. Um, the first summer that he lived with us, my youngest was playing baseball, and Timothy actually mentioned, because we had planned to put him in public high school, I'm gonna try out for the baseball team, and I didn't say anything to him, but I remember thinking, sorry, sweetie, there's no way, you don't have the coordination for that. All right, uh, and he, he liked uh, to take, well, you tell me, did, did he like to take things apart? Oh yes, absolutely. Can you He's, give some examples? Um, he took batteries apart, he took toys apart, my, my youngest son's toys. Um, he, if he could get a hold of anything from Paul's room, he would take like, mostly it was Legos, Paul still had Legos. Um, <coughs> he, at one point, um, messed with our water heater. What do you mean? Uh, he actually turned the gas off to the water heater. Um, he, he knocked out the pilot light and then turned the gas off as well at different points. Okay. Were you, did you have any concerns as to whether or not this, his, his predilections, his, his desire to get into things, might be a safety hazard for either him or somebody else in the home. Extremely, I was extremely concerned about that, yes sir. So it is. it was your desire to, it was it just your desire to monitor Timothy or did you, did you also have a younger child in the home that you want to monitor? Uh, we had both. Okay, was it, well who, who did you want to monitor? One or the other or both? Both. Okay, all right. So you set up these, these video and audio cameras, correct? Yes sir. Okay. Uh, and alarms on the doors? On Those didn't get installed until about three weeks before he passed away. Okay. And uh, motion sensors? Yes, sir. Okay. He got around the motion sensors multiple times. Were you able to Were you able to stay home and personally monitor your children? No, I had to work full time. Okay. Uh, how were you? Were you able to get specifically? Were you able to get Timothy into school? No, we were not. We tried to, to enroll him in Mona Shores High School, and um, Mona Shores told me that my ex, 
I guess Timothy had damaged a Chromebook in Oklahoma, and because my ex owed money on that, they would not send his records up to us. So we were not able to enroll him. So I found an uh, online homeschool curriculum that I had to monitor, but I, I enrolled him in that. Let me make sure I understand. Was it your original intention to put Timothy into public schools? Yes, sir. We okay. started the process. I filled out the paperwork. Um, because of my work schedule, I couldn't actually take paperwork to Mona Shores. My, my husband did that. Adam did that. Um, but yes, we did try to, to get him enrolled. Okay. And the youngest child, G, was he in public schools? No, he was homeschooled. What about Paul? Do you know if he was homeschooled or if he, when he got to you, was he still in school? No, he had graduated high school. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Now, you, you mentioned that you weren't able to stay at home and, and uh, uh, care for your children at home, in the home, um, as, as a stay-at-home parent. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, <clears throat> what, what type of, I assume you're in the, out working? Yes, sir. Okay. Ex explain to, to the jury the work that you did during the period of time that Timothy arrived in your home? I was, when, when he first arrived, I was still studying for the bar exam, so my husband was working full time, um, and I was just doing, uh, I, I trained dogs on the side, everything from basic obedience up through different types of service dogs for other people, and so I had a couple of dog training clients, but mostly I was studying for the bar exam. I also was an intern here in this courthouse. That, that paid time. a lot of money? Oh, it was, it was not paid at all, sir. Okay. Um, but, uh, it was the week of the bar exam. Um, my actually, my, my judge that I worked for here as a law clerk informed me of this position that was opened in Nuevo County, and she knew that the judge referred me, and that's when I did the interview. And, and I started work, I think it was three days, two days after I completed the bar exam. Okay. Was that a paid position? Yes, it was. Was, was it lucrative enough where you didn't have to do any other work? Um, well, with my husband's income, it was. Okay. But your husband's income stopped when he, when he got sick? When he had the stroke, yes. Okay. So at that point, was it enough income to provide for you and your family? No. Were you receiving any other outside income? <coughs> um, my um, older brother lives in the home that I, used to, that I still own in Oklahoma, and he paid rent to us. Okay. But it wasn't a lot. It was, that went towards our house rent. Child support? No. My, my ex, one of the siblings was forgotten yesterday. Um, I, there's five total. We talked about the four boys. I also have a daughter. Um, she is now 19, but she stayed down with her dad. Okay. So we each had one, so there was no, um, there was no child support. And because of child support on the, the other four kids, I actually was still paying my ex child support. It was still being deducted from my check. Okay. So you had that. That's another deduction from your income. Thousand dollars a month. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. So. Um, Were you also doing tutoring when you went to the judge who was paying you? Were you still tutoring or doing any other outside work? Not at that. I was doing the dog training. Okay. Let, let me ask you this. What time in the morning did you leave to go to work? Um, I usually left the house about 6.30. And what time on an average were you getting home? About 6 o'clock. Okay. So we're talking about 12 hours away from the home? Yes, sir. Okay. Those, those, those monitors, um, uh, the video cameras in your home you were able to or to re, to view them while at work from my phone occasionally yes sir okay um, and you were, but you were still working yes sir I didn't view them at all until after the stroke I mean because my husband was there or we had we had arrangements where my husband was off certain days of the week Paul was off one day specifically one day a week so he took care of, of Gabriel and Timothy and then um, the other two days that I need to care for Gabriel when my husband was working, he actually went to my in-law's house down in West Olive. May I approach the witness for just a moment, John? You may. Uh, let's see. You, you have, so you have three children at home. Yes, sir. Okay. And my understanding is you, you, you faced other challenges personally in terms of your own personal health. Today. Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Uh, for instance, let, let's run down the list. You have insomnia. Severe insomnia caused by attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Okay. And, and uh, for those folks who, who get a great night's sleep every night, don't understand <clears throat> what insomnia does to, to your ability to function, can you explain to them what impact 
chronic insomnia has on a person? It limits your ability to think clearly. Um, your energy level is, is greatly reduced. Um, takes a lot longer to process things. Um, you forget things easier. Uh, it was just, it was much harder to function with, with so little sleep. Okay. And you talked about your other, your other personal disorders. Were you seeking medications for those? Um, I was for, um, I had, I have severe attention deficit hyperactivity disorder combined type. Um, I also have sensory processing disorder and OCD. Um, and then after my husband's stroke, as a result of my husband's stroke, because I viewed him, I, I, I wasn't in the room when he had the stroke, but I, it was, I was there right afterwards. And so I developed post-traumatic stress disorder with disassociation from that. The only medication that I was on was for the ADHD. Okay. Uh, and you had, you had the service dogs in your presence to... I had one service dog for me, yes. Okay. Sir. Um, what source of medical, what source of interventions were available for, for Timothy's disorders? Um, when he came to us, he was on medication. He was on, they gave us a whole, like, large gallon-sized Ziploc bag of medications for him. Um, I could not refill them because I could not get him to the doctor. Um, we were going to try to adjust his medication because when he came to live with us, when he took his medicine, he was a zombie. It was, it was just horrific. Um, and when Paul came to live with us, because he, Paul had only been there a year when Timothy moved down, or moved up, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and when Paul, he was on the same big bag of medication, um, and there were serious concerns that they just, instead of handling, especially my ex, he wanted to medicate them. But I never got that option because I couldn't take him to the doctor. Okay. All right. Um, there's been uh, some allegations, there's been some implications, let's put it that way, that you, uh, tried to keep people from seeing Timothy, that you tried to keep him away from public view, that he didn't go to school, he didn't go to the doctor, et cetera. Then he went to, he went outside, he was in the backyard. You remember that testimony? Yes, sir. Uh, from, if, if someone's outside in your backyard, is he, are there trees or fences or other obstacles to keep the neighbors from looking over there and seeing uh, who's out in your yard? No, there was a clearing before, there was, there was woods at the back of the lot but there was a clearing, and at least the neighbors on each side, they, there were pretty sizable windows on the back of their homes. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't in the, I think the next door was a two level, but the one on one side was just a, a single level. It may have had a basement, I don't know. Um, but there was big windows, and they could see into our backyard easily. Okay. Um, was it ever your intention to keep people from seeing Timothy? No, my mother-in-law saw him. We had a, they do rental home inspections, I guess the city of Norton Shores. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember if it was late April or early May of 2022, but it was in that neighborhood. And so we'd had the inspection that day, and my mother-in-law happened to stop by that day. And I invited her in. We, we sat and talked. And Timothy wanted to come say hi, so he, he came up and said hi to her. Um, now, you're, you're a uh, Muskegon County transplant, correct? You're, you're, yes, you're, I'm not okay. from around here. So, and where's, and I'm assuming that you're, you're your, bi your direct biological family, there's not a lot of them in this county? There's no, bi I don't have, other than my children, I don't have any biological father, biological family here. Okay. How far away are they? Uh, my older brother is in Oklahoma City, and then I have two sisters that I have not talked to in over 20 years, and they live in Alabama where I'm from. Okay. So how, how often do those folks, your bio family, stop by and to see how sister's doing? Um, the last time I saw my older brother was when we all, we went down to North Carolina for my oldest son's wedding in October of 2021, and then my, my brother and sister-in-law drove over from Oklahoma for the wedding as well. We FaceTimed a lot. We watched football games on FaceTime, but um, I didn't get to see them after we moved up here. Okay. Do you have a lot of friends in the area that will come by, will stop by, on, uh, maybe on, does it happen to be in the area, that sort of thing, that will come by and, and, and visit your home? Most of my friends were from work, and they actually, because I worked in Nuego County, they lived in Nuego or Oceana County, or even further, I don't know, I'm not from here, I don't know what county is next to Nuego East, um, but I know at least one person from work lived in, I think it's Big Rapids. Yeah. Um, so no, they didn't stop by because they were too far away. Did you have a lot of time for social interactions at your home? No, not at all. And how about Paul, did he have friends that he'd bring by, or? No, he talked about people at work, but he never asked to bring anybody over. Did, did, were there any, was he ever given any instructions? You can't have people in this house? Absolutely not. And what about uh, the youngest child, G? Did he have any friends that, for sleepovers or anything like that? 
We didn't have any friends over for, no. Um, he had, he played baseball. Um, because of me not being able to get out, he didn't get out a lot. I mean, I wish I could have gotten him out more. That's why we put him in baseball, so he could get around other kids some more. Um, I had been looking into homeschool co-ops, but with my schedule, I just couldn't do that. Okay. What, in your opinion, what which would you say was more impactful in terms of your, you know, get Timothy out of the house? Was it, was it your desire he not get out of the house or your work requirements? Um, it was work requirements and his choice. Um, there was... I want to say it was April. The weather was halfway decent. I guess people here were, I mean, there was kids down the street. There was teenagers playing basketball when I came home from the grocery store one weekend. Mm -hmm. And I, I stopped and rolled my window down and said, hey, I've got a 15-year-old at home. Can he come play with y'all? Even though I knew he wasn't coordinated, I, knew he, I thought he would enjoy it. And they said, yeah, sure, absolutely. And he <coughs> did not want to go play. Okay. Did he ever request to go play and you denied him? No, no, he never did. Actually, Paul, we had, um, mom and dad, my, my in-laws, got Timothy a bike for his 15th birthday. And Paul and he, we were on a cul-de-sac. And um, Paul had tried to teach him to ride the bike. Um, okay. I know, I know they had a few sessions. I don't know how many. Okay. So those, on those occasions, he'd be outside? Oh, yeah, he was out in the cul-de-sac, in front of the house. In the cul -de -sac. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's talk about some of the things that have come up in this case. Uh, there, there were, uh, okay, there, there are leg irons discovered in your home. Were you aware of those? I, I was aware that Paul had them. Um, you actually could look on my Amazon. Paul had the option to do payment on the Amazon as well as mine, uh -huh. and Paul had actually ordered those under his, his account. Okay, you did not order the leg irons? I did not, no. Did you, did you ever use them? No, sir. No, uh, I never instructed. Let's be in specific. Did you ever use them with Timothy? No, sir. Okay. Uh, did you ever notice any uh, bruising on Timothy's wrists or legs uh, that might be attributable to the use of leg iron? No, sir. I never saw anything like that. Uh, you heard Paul talk about plastic ties. W what was that about? I honestly don't remember. Okay. Um, I, I don't know why we would order... I mean, I saw the ties. I don't, I don't remember ordering them. Okay. I don't know what happened there. You're going to say I don't remember a lot, aren't you? Unfortunately, yes, because of the dissociation. Okay. Explain to, explain to the jury what that means. Um, well, there, I guess there's different forms. Somebody told me this. I did not find out about the PTSD and the dis disassociation until about seven months after my husband's stroke, even though it had been going on since right, the right. stroke. I need to place an objection on the record, and I think we're going to have to excuse the jury. Okay. <clears throat> The jury? Uh, well, excuse you back in the jury room. Maybe seated. Uh, I reckon you feel like the jury is now in the jury room secure. Go ahead, Mr. Roberts. Well, for, first and foremost, Your Honor, she's not qualified to testify about what this association means and what this association is, what effect this association is. Anything that she knows about that presumably would have to be told to her by a doctor. We've already been down the road. Uh, Mr. Johnson's, to my, to my knowledge, has tried multiple doctors that would be able to provide a diagnosis of Ms. Van Ark to indicate that she has you know, some type of disassociation or some type of mental disorder which would have contributed to this offense and has not done so. That's an insanity defense. We covered that extensively. Mr. Johnson uh, he valiantly tried to, to get that and has been unable to, to provide any information to me from any medical doctor who's examined Ms. Van Ark that she suffers from any of these diagnoses. So I'm objecting to this entire line of questioning about disassociation, about why she can't remember certain things. Um, if she wants to say she just can't remember, I, I guess she can just say she can't remember, but she doesn't get to use the excuse that this is disassociation. Furthermore, I, ha I have a doctor still on standby as a potential rebuttal witness who did examine Ms. Van Der Ark. It's the report from the Forensic Center, which, with, which Mr. Johnson has, which essentially debunks this entire disassociation 
a myth that she doesn't remember things or chooses not to remember things because of some disassociation. So I, I'm objecting to this entire line of questioning. It's an inappropriate, essentially, defense that's being raised here. It's, it sounds like it's almost like a diminished capacity type defense, which we all know is not a valid defense. Uh, and I'm not on notice of any insanity defense or any doctor would provide a diagnosis meaningful to, for the jury so they understand what these things actually are. All right, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, sir. Initially, let, let me uh, tell you what's not. It's not an insanity defense. It is, and certainly, uh, my client can testify as to what she knows. Now, if, if she's, if the people are at liberty to examine her as to what she knows and how she might know that and, and, and determine that her, her sources of information aren't adequate or that her understanding is inadequate, but certainly I can ask her what she knows and what she how, how what she knows corresponds to what's going on with her physically and mentally. Those, those do not rise to insanity defense, and certainly if she says, I don't remember, she can explain why. If she, judge, if she were a drunk and she said, I can't remember because I was drunk that night, we would allow that in. If she says, I can't remember because it's disassociation thing, then that should be allowable. It, is, it doesn't rise to a legal defense, it doesn't arise to uh, a, 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 a argument of insanity. What it does is an, it's an explanation simply of what she did next. Well, how did, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why don't you remember these things? That's what this explains. And, and quite frankly, that I think is, is relevant and it's certainly, uh, I think, permissible at this point. If, if the people uh, have an expert that they can bring in and say, hey, look, that's not what's going on with this woman, that's, that's their call. But to say she can't even talk about it because somebody else may disagree with her is, is not the standard. The standard here is, is the, is the information relevant? And certainly, is, did she act upon it? Certainly. And she's acting upon this information. And, it explain, and does it explain an issue for which the, ju the jury has to determine? They have to determine intention. And, and quite frankly, she, if she doesn't even remember the conduct that she's involved with, certainly that goes to determine show that she didn't make an, an informed, well, I would argue that it shows that she didn't make an informed choice to do the things that, that happened in that household. Or certainly she gets a chance to explain why it is I don't remember, because that's going to be her answer. I don't remember. And so she gets a chance to explain that. And that's all we're asking here. We're not going to argue that this is a defense. It's certainly, it's just simply an explanation for why she did what she did. All right, Mr. Roberts. Well, the problem, she can certainly answer. She, she doesn't remember. Absolutely. What she can do is testify about a diagnosis that she says that she's been provided by somebody and an explanation for what that diagnosis means. She's not a doctor. Anything that she learned to talk about disassociation was provided to her by hearsay. And that those individuals, if, if, that was the if that is going to be the testimony and disassociation is the defense, then I want the doctor here that examined her and diagnosed her with having disassociation so she can conveniently forget the horrible things that happened in this case. It's all hearsay. It's not the same thing as intoxication. So, Mr. It's Johnson, I, I think you know you, you're going to ask her if she she doesn't remember. Assuming she's going to answer no, well, why don't you not remember? She's going to say, well, because I have this dissociation disorder, right? I, I think, Mr. I think you'd have to lay the foundation for that, uh, for that testimony, and the foundation for that testimony would have to come would be hearsay. Uh, would be from some other source. Um, she's obviously not a doctor. She can't self-diagnose herself. She's not been admitted as an expert, so she's, she, she can, as a lay person, testify to what she feels and those things rationally based upon her feelings and what she sees and understands. So I don't think it's an objection that she can say, you know, I don't remember. Why don't you remember? Well, because, you know, I black out. Now, your example was drunk driving. Well, a lay person can say, hey, listen, in my experience, when I drink eight beers, I, you know, stumble, I can't really remember, those kind of things. And it's rationally based on her perception. And she can describe those things that are happening to her, I think that's fair. But to, in order to say, yes, that is exactly dissociation disorder or this, that has got to be a foundation laid for that. Yes, and she cannot lay that foundation. And if she's going to, again, that would be hearsay. Again, if a doctor comes in and says, we told her this, delays the foundation, okay, fine. But I think Mr. Roberts uh, is correct when he says that foundation has not been laid, which would then implicate him bringing in a doctor to say that's not true. So uh, based on that, I am going to sustain the objection. Again, you can still ask her about what she felt, what she heard, what she saw, 
the symptoms she experienced. I, I don't think you're objecting to that, Mr. Roberts. Is that correct? Well, symptoms makes me a little bit nervous. I guess we can we, we can address it on a, on a okay. answer by answer basis. No, she says, hey, but, look, I felt heart palpitations, or I felt my blood pressure going up, or I felt oh, certainly okay. talking about f physical yeah physical impacts on okay. on your own body. Sure, any, any, anybody okay. can testify to those things. Right. But but tying it to any specific diagnosis is is just inappropriate okay. because there's there's no foundation as the courts indicate. I agree. Thank All right. You. So well, objection well, is uh, sustained. Uh, you understand? We can't talk about disassociation. We can't use that term. Yes, sir. Okay. Secondly, Judge, <laughs> and a few moments ago, I, I was given permission to, to, to approach my client. I whispered something in her ear. She was using Gabriel's name. Yeah, Mr. And, John, I did hear. Mr. Roberts caught that, that too. That yeah. yeah. So no, I didn't have. I didn't say anything then, right. and I understand. I. Okay. We've been, you know, practice. I've seen you in practice. You haven't actually practiced in front of me, yet, but. <laughs> Um, but I but I certainly have seen you in action, so I, I think I, I trust that you're not doing anything nefarious. So thank you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else, Mr. No. Roberts? No, sir. No. Okay. Let's bring him back out. Please rise. Seated. Right, you may continue, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Ark, uh, you, you've, you've told the jury about how busy you are, and you told the jury that, that you have some, some physical things going on with you, correct? Yes, sir. How did those things impact you in terms of, of your, 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 your ability to think clearly, organize, and uh, follow through on information? Starting right after my husband's stroke, um, I started experiencing episodes where if you've ever passed out, like the world closed, you get tunnel vision and the world closes in on you until you, you completely black out. It felt like I was blacking out, but I didn't actually pass out. Um, and the events that happened after that, I have no idea of what happened. I don't remember it. I, I don't know. Okay. And this happened anytime I got even a little stressed. This so, happened. so you're understanding, you're under oath right now, correct? Yes, sir. And you're asked to tell the truth right now. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're, we're asking you that you not fill in, not guess at anything? Correct. That, okay. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So it is, if you don't understand, we need to say, you don't, or you don't remember, we need to say those things. Correct. Okay. Um, and and you, did, you did testify that these symptoms and this pressure impacted your recollections. Is that Absolutely, correct? yes. And then there's the, the final pressure. You, you're, you're raising children and, and teenage children. Uh, some of them in your home at the same yes. time. So all these things are going on at once. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, while you're at work monitoring, and you've got the ability to monitor the home, uh, would your job permit you? Did you have the ability to sit in front of a monitor and watch the home all the time? Or did, were there times that you could not do that? Most of the time I couldn't do it. And why is that? Because I had work to do. Um, we were, part of the time I was in court with my judge, um, and then most of the time I was doing research or doing other tasks that my judge or one of the other judges in the county assigned. So I didn't, I didn't have time to do that. Uh, you're, when, when you're watching the videos on the phone, you said you watched them with your, your telephone screen, correct? Correct. And it is a standard screen, nothing special about it? It was an iPhone, I think it was a 12. Okay. Um, I've seen those video cameras where they were systems where the, you can have four <clears throat> different cameras going all at one time, all the same screen. Was that your situation or did you move from camera to camera and only have that camera visible? No, the cameras were different brands and different cameras, so you could only do one at a time. Okay, all right. So, and were you wearing an iWatch as well? An Apple Watch, yes. Apple Watch, Apple Watch. thank you. Uh, were you able to monitor your children uh, from the Apple Watch? No. Okay. Uh, so. If you, were, if you were, say, in a courtroom like this and you're doing your job 
and got a message on your Apple Watch, which, what would you get? Um, I, you could get messages and pictures. You couldn't see it. I mean, the screen was tiny. Um, but you could get messages, and then there's certain, like, pat responses, like pre-programmed responses, or you can type with your finger. Okay. I'm going to ask you about a specific uh, email or text that you received uh, that accompanied a picture. Uh, it's, it's the one that the prosecutors given to, to, the, to the jury where that shows Timothy uh, from the chest up and then his legs. You know what I'm talking about? I have heard about it. I have not actually seen these pictures. How could well, you respond to it? How's that come that be? I typed on my, we were in court that day. Uh -huh. I actually think I responded. I'm in court. Um, I scribbled out a message real quick. Back okay. to Paul. Okay. So you, you, did you see the photograph afterwards? No, I had too many messages on my phone. I don't usually scroll back. Okay. So how did you know to respond to, to, to Paul to say, give him some food? Because of what he said. He had sent a message saying something. Okay. So you were able to see the message. Yes, I saw, I saw the message. And the, the picture, I mean, it's this big, but there was pictures. I just couldn't see what it was of. Okay. Let's, and I, I deviated again. I tend to do that. Sorry about that. I need to be more organized, and we'll get there. Um, we talked about the leg irons. We talked about the plastic ties. And did you purchase those plastic ties? I don't remember honestly. Okay. Uh, what about the hot sauce? Talk. Tell this jury about hot sauce and your son Timothy. My, my under. Well, I'm not going to ask. Tell you my understanding because you don't need to know that. The question is, whose idea was it to, to, get hot sauce and to administer it to your son? The idea was originally Paul's. Okay. And what was, the, what was the point of the hot sauce? Um, because we had tried multiple other discipline methods and he thought maybe that would get him to stop misbehaving. Okay. He suggested it to me and I, at that, I was so wrung out, I was willing to try just about anything. All right. Were you aware of how, that this, were you aware that this hot sauce was purchased online? Yes. Do you know why it was purchased online instead of going to Meyer and, and picking up a bottle of hot sauce? Well, I didn't go. I didn't have time to go to the store. I mean, our groceries were. I did the grocery delivery through okay. the Walmart app or through the Meyer app. Um, so, and I didn't see anything. Um, they just had basic stuff. And from our discussion, we had talked about something. And Timothy could handle this child. When I got well, pregnant, I, I, okay. I know you're going. You're gonna, hold on a second. Okay. Sorry. I, I, I want to make sure we understand this. Th this this hot sauce has a, has a particular label. I, I've never seen it at Meyer. Did you did you see the label? Did you see the, the hot sauce itself? Did you what what did you did you order it? I believe I ordered at least one of the bottles. Yes. Okay. Why did you order this particular hot sauce or these particular hot sauces? What did they have in common? Um, because I think it was the same brand, um, the same one. Um, because it was hotter than what you could usually get, and because Timothy could he liked spicy food. Okay. He loved spicy food. All right. Uh, <clears throat> How, how do you know you like spicy food? That actually started before he was ever born. Um, before I got pregnant with Timothy, I didn't like spicy at all. I mean, I nothing, no heat, nothing. And when I got pregnant with him, I started craving. Um, my ex liked spicy foods, but I didn't, and I started craving. Like I would outspice my my ex. Um, it was amazing. Um, I still like, I, not to the extent when I was pregnant, but it, that some of that remained. But Timothy, as early as age two, he could eat a whole bag of the flaming hot Cheetos without a drink, I mean, just, he could down, he, he loved spicy food, it was, okay. it used to scare the heck out of me. But you were aware that this, these spices were, were hotter than what you yes. could admire? Yes, yes. And, and that it was for disciplinary issues, is that yes. correct? Did you ever, uh, the, the testimony was that you did child care while uh, Paul was at school or at work, did you ever administer any of the hot sauce yourself? If I remember, I might have, have done some on bread a couple of times, okay. um, but usually by the time I got home, um, that either we were cooking food, I, I had to cook, or I had had Paul cook something so I could feed everybody. Um, but I don't recall, I, I think I did it on bread once or twice maybe, but that was it. There's a text out there that says, you suggested putting hot sauce on his penis. Do you remember hearing that? With the I remember hearing it, yes. Do you remember saying those things? I do not, no sir. Um, 
oh yeah, um, we talked we talked about the ice baths. I'm like, some talk cold baths, and sometimes they were called ice baths. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the the source of the ice, according to the testimony I heard, was your home refrigerator. No, it was actually a countertop ice maker. The refrigerator did not have an ice maker in it. Okay, and you didn't go on by the. the 50 pound bags of ice for the home? No, I did not. How much ice are we talking about for that, that, that tabletop ice maker? Can? It actually made about a cup and a half of ice. I had to measure it to use it for, I made some frappes at times. Okay. Um, the basket was maybe this wide, and then underneath was the water, um, where the water was kept, because that's how it made the ice. Okay. And then it took about two hours to remake more ice. Okay. You admit getting frustrated with uh, your child care efforts with Timothy, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, frustrated, discouraged. Did you ever intend to hurt him? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You, you raised other children, correct? Yes, I did. And uh, while Timmy was malnourished, do you, to your knowledge, have any of your other children ever been reported as malnourished? No, not at all. I, as I looked at Paul, he seemed uh, like a thin guy to me. He is. That's we're all very pretty small. Well, okay. other my oldest is a little bit thicker. Okay. My my question is this: Is it was Timothy's when he was healthy? Was his build like his brothers, or was is he was he built like his older brother, <coughs> who's a little heavier? He went back and forth. Um, he actually there was an, um, a situation where he actually got on the the bathroom scale in it was after Mother's Day of 2022. Um, I can tell you why I know it's after Mother's Day if you want me to. No, that's not necessary. Okay. Unless but um, I, was, I, I was training a new service dog, as has been discussed. He's a great Dane puppy. He was seven months old at the time. And he was too big to sit on the bathroom scale to get his weight. And I wanted to see what he weighed. And Timothy, what we would do is somebody would stand on the scale, get your weight, and then you pick up the dog. And Timothy wanted to help out that day. Um, so I, I thought the dog would be too big for him at that point. He was already really big at seven months old. But uh, I said, okay, let's try it. And so it was, like I said, sometime after Mother's Day. It wasn't very long after Mother's Day. But at the time, he was 104. Timothy was. Okay. Um, he could not pick up the dog because the dog was 102 at the time. Okay. <coughs> Part of this process of providing child care, mm -hmm. somebody had to be the eyes in the house when you weren't there. Is that correct? Yes. And you selected Paul for that purpose. I didn't have a choice. That was my only option. How much did you rely upon what Paul was telling you? I totally relied on him. Do you remember the, the uh, during the reading of the uh, uh, transcripts, the, the text, that you asked Paul? Matter of fact, let me. Be honest with me. Are you worried about him at all? Or is it all a bunch of BS? Like it has been for days. Do you remember that? Do you remember that text? Um, vaguely, yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember his response? I remember he said he wasn't worried about it. Okay. Did you rely on that? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He was the one. I was. I was at home so few hours when the kids were awake, unfortunately. And then you had to sleep. Try to sleep yourself. I tried, yes, sir. And they slept better than I did. Let's let's face it. Your house is a mess. It's a wreck. Yes, sir. Why was that? I'm, honestly, I'm not a great person at keeping things clean, and having three boys that contributed. Um, I tried to, to get help, their help cleaning up as much as I could, but I just didn't have time or the energy. With the lack of sleep and everything else going on, I, I barely functioned. Okay. And um, that, that, eat, that message I, well, strike that, I need that. Did you depend, I asked you, did you depend on what Paul was telling you? Yes, sir. Your, in your opinion, did Paul ever, for lack of a better term, sound the alarm? Not I mean, that I was aware of, no, sir. Okay. Do you, that one message, was, Just, was that it? That was it. That's the only thing I got from Paul that ever had any concern. With the one little pictures in it? Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's, okay, let's talk about some other stuff here. Um, once, once you discovered that, that Timothy had passed, uh, and once the police get there, do you tell them the truth? 
I was so freaked out, I was, I'm sorry. I'm sleep. I've got one. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Why didn't you tell him the truth? Why were you so freaked? I don't remember what my line of thinking was at the time. I was so tired. I don't, I don't know. I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. Were you tired at that point? I was exhausted. I, the night before he passed, I had less than an hour of sleep. Were you frightened at that point? Absolutely. I just lost my son. You need a moment? I'm okay. Okay. Um, were you expecting? Were you, were you, was this, some, this outcome expected by you? Absolutely not. No. So would it be safe to say you were surprised? I was shocked. Were you in disbelief initially? Yes, absolutely. Um, you've got a, 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 a there's, there's an indication that it took you a while to call the police. In fact, you told, you told uh, uh, Paul not to, according to Paul's testimony. Why did it take you so long? He said 18 minutes out. Why did it take you so long to call the police? I have no idea, honestly. It was, I was, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. It was, it was surreal, like you're not even, you don't even know what's going on. It was, you just, time slowed down and I didn't know what was going on. When was the first time you found out it took 18 minutes to call the police? Um, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, yeah, it was it, within the last few days. Okay. That's the first time. Do you remember who was testifying when you found out? Um, it doesn't matter. Right. I think we discussed it at a meeting on Monday. <clears throat> um, was it Monday? Okay. I think it so. Um, but and I heard 14 minutes initially, and then the first time I heard 18 minutes was when Paul said it okay. yesterday. Um, do you remember? <clears throat> how clear is your memory of the? Of the of your time and from the time you found uh, Timothy and and he had passed and the t to the time you finished talking to the police that day, it's spotty. Okay. Um, the 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 first officer said that uh, 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 you were distraught. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, he said that you were crying. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Do you remember telling the police that you that uh, uh, you pulled Timothy from his bunk bed when you found him in distress? I remember saying something like that, yes, sir. Was that true? No, sir. Do you remember uh, providing CPR for Timothy? Yes, I do. When, when did you stop that? Um, when the pro-med people walked down into the basement. I, I, um, I had asked them to take over, and they didn't take over right away, but they said I had to, to leave the area. OK. Let's do the hard stuff here. Uh, jury's seen pictures of Timothy. We've all seen pictures of Timothy at the time of his death. How could you not know he was that ill? How could you not know? Honestly, I just, I was barely functioning. I missed a lot. There's, I mean, I hate it because, I mean, I feel like a complete failure, but there was things that I just didn't see. There was a lot that I didn't see, unfortunately. Those, on those, in those texts, you, you instruct Paul to make sure he's getting enough calories, correct? Yes, sir. I did. You had a restricted diet, correct? Yes, sir. But you instructed Paul to make sure he's getting calories. Yes, sir, I did. Did you rely on that? Absolutely. Um, Paul says he called the police ultimately. Who called the police? I called 911. It was on my phone. I'm sure you can pull the call and find out where it's from. Did you intend to hurt Timothy? No, never. Did you did you know he was being hurt? No, I didn't, unfortunately. The 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 tactics that you use to uh, first of all, we're, we're, the tactics, well, the tactics that you use to discipline Timothy, 
Did they seem extreme or outrageous to you at the time? No. Um, do you re Timothy remained in, you'll admit it was, it, the, the bath was not warm on the day he died. It was a cold bath. Correct, the day okay. before. It wasn't an ice bath though, correct? I Sorry, wasn't, you know. I, um, I, from the text it looks like he did, but I, that wasn't the, what was said to do. Okay. Paul chose to do the ice on his own if you look at the text. Okay. So, do you, there's testimony that you remained in that tub for hours. Were you aware of that? No, I, I didn't realize he was in the tub, no. When you came home, you didn't realize he was in the tub? I did, when I got home, I actually ran him a warm bath when I got home. Okay, where? In the tub, downstairs. Okay, so once you found him in the tub, you, what did you, explain the dream what you're talking about. Um, well, I, I had to get Paul to work, and then I came home, and um, my understanding, at least, was that when Paul had splashed water, he had splashed it on his face only. That's what I understood. Um, so I didn't realize he was still there. Um, and so when he, when he, I got home, I was like, wait a second, what the? So I, I decided to go ahead and run a warm bath just to, to. There's, there's a bunch of stuff in there talk about make sure he doesn't sleep, make sure he doesn't sleep. What's that about? Um, there was a couple of situations where he actually, Timothy actually intentionally kept everybody in the house awake. Um, he would intentionally set off the motion sensors. Um, he would make noise. Um, with the house being a bi level, you could hear a lot from the downstairs. Um, but he intentionally kept everybody awake. Okay. Um, and so that was, okay, if you're going to keep us awake, then you have to stay awake. Okay. So here, here's, the, here's my question. If he slept all day, what would he do all night? Oh, he'd be up all night. There's no, he had to, you had to get him up no later than about 10 in the morning or he was, he was up all night long. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a door that has a, a, a dent in it that we saw an exhibit of, okay? Um, and, and you heard Paul testify that he, he did that. Yes. What is your recollection of that incident? Um, I, what I remember is I, hear, I remember hearing Paul yell from his room because his room was directly below the master bedroom. Um, and then I pulled up the, I wasn't asleep, um, so I pulled up the, the main camera in the, the basement area and I see Paul come out and kick that door and I, I went to hit the button. He was screaming at Timothy while it happened and I hit the, the um, two-way talk button on the camera and said, hey, what the heck, go back to bed. And I actually had to physically go downstairs and get him away from the door and, and send him to bed. Was the, in the text on occasion, Paul would have uh, say things that suggest aggressions <clears throat> towards Timothy on occasion. Was that, did you know any other circumstances other than what's in the, those, those uh, situations in the text? Oh, absolutely. Paul was, he never displayed that towards my youngest. He never displayed that towards my husband when he was still at home or myself. Um, he would get aggressive when he was playing games. He would get really angry. He had some serious anger, anger issues. Um, and then when Timothy moved up, and Timothy did push his buttons some, mm -hmm. but he just, he never reacted well. I mean, he just overreacted to Timothy every time. It was, he hardly ever reacted rationally to Timothy. Okay. And so, uh, other than what he was texting you, and other than what you could see when you weren't working at, the, at, the, at your job, uh, you don't have firsthand information as to what's going on between Paul and Timothy. Is that correct? No, I would, I asked my little guy occasionally, um, but Timothy never told me anything that was going on. Okay. So um, I did, I mean, I asked just because I, I if, if I had texted Paul and he seemed upset, um, then I would get home and, hey, is everything okay? Um, and my, my little guy, um, honestly, I don't remember him ever saying that there was, there was an issue. He said, yeah, Paul got mad, but that was it. He never said anything happened. Okay. <clears throat> One moment, please. What was your intent when you would administer punishments to Timothy? To get him to behave. Was it ever your intent to harm him? No, absolutely not. No, I the the uh, the locks on the fridge and freezer. They're actually he that was. He scared the 
heck out of me after my husband's stroke. And that's what brought those two on. Okay. Uh, I can tell you what happened. What was the incident, and then I got a, what was the incident that caused you to put locks on the fridge? Um, I had just purchased a two pound bag of frozen chicken nuggets and put it in the freezer. Um, and overnight, I guess he got a, around the motion sensors. Um, but the next day, it was a weekend, and the next day I went to, um, little man asked for, for some chicken nuggets. And I went to get them, and the, the bag was empty in the freezer. And I was like, what? On? I mean, we hadn't touched it. Mm -hmm. And so I started asking, and at first Timothy lied to me. He said he didn't touch it. Um, and then I went and checked with little man and with Paul, and nobody had touched the, so I went back, because I had issues with both Paul and Timothy lying to me a lot. Um, so I went back to Timothy, I said, Somebody, nobody else has touched this. He said, I ate them. I said, okay, did you cook them? He said, no, he ate the whole two pound bag frozen, okay. uncooked chicken. All right, were you concerned about his health and getting into and eating frozen food? Yes, and um, he ate, um, there was a time where he ate uncooked bacon out of the fridge before the chicken nugget incident. He ate a whole pound of uncooked ground beef at one point. Um, this was all after the stroke when there was less people to keep an eye on. Did it occur to you he's doing those things because he's hungry? He's starving? No, he, I mean, he, there was plenty of food. We were, there was no issues. He never told me he was hungry at the time when these incidents happened. Okay. So, fast forward. You offer him two pizza rolls if he does cer a certain thing. And you say, I don't care if they're frozen when you give them to him. If you're concerned about him eating frozen food, why would you offer him two frozen pizza rolls? Because the chicken was uncooked and it's dangerous. I was, that actually I had a, a panic attack when he did the chicken. It was, it was terrifying. I broke down completely. So the nuggets were uncooked chicken? Yes, it's uncooked chicken. That's, it, it, that could have killed him. Okay. It freaked me out. And, but the pizza rolls were at least cooked? Yes. That was just, you reheated them. Okay. He was, and I'll give you one more. He was rail thin. How did you not notice? I wish I hadn't answered that. Um, part of it, he actually, from the time of the stroke, because my husband's stroke was January 3rd of 2022, so it was, most of this was cold weather. Um, part of it was he wore, he wore big clothes, he wore hoodies. The clothes that were sent to him from his dad and stepmom, um, most of the pants didn't fit him well to begin with. And I had gotten him a couple of pairs of jeans, but I mean, I couldn't afford a lot. Um, and he also, um, once the stroke happened, he got really reclusive. Um, he, he just, I mean, he didn't want, and I had to force him, um, for a while when he was doing his homeschooling, he would do it on his tablet. And then I found out he was, I tried to lock the tablet down, um, but he was doing other stuff on his tablet when he was supposed <coughs> to be doing schoolwork. So I started the, the curriculum that he was on, you could print the, the assignments and the questions. So I started printing that and um, literally he'd be like, just stick it on the stairs. I'd, and he'd give me the other assignments, I would grade them and stick them in the, and put them into the, the program. But he, he didn't want anything to do with me, hardly at all. Yeah, but when you put your arms around him to hug your he son. He didn't want hugged. He was, he was 15, he didn't want, he, he didn't want me. And he was autistic, correct? He was, he was high functioning. Okay. But he, most of the autism came with like interactions with other people, he struggled there. Okay. So it wasn't, was it just you he didn't want touching, or was there anybody, he didn't want anybody else? Um, he didn't want Gabriel, sorry, he didn't want little man hugging him either. Okay. What about Paul? Do you ever uh, see They him? never offered to hug each other. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roberts, how, how long do you anticipate your... Oh, I'm thinking at least an hour and a half, Judge. So. Okay. Well, uh, it's a little early before lunch. I think it's a natural time to take a break, unless you prefer to start now, no, Mr. Actually, Roberts. There's an issue I think with the, that I like to address first. It might cut a small chunk of that out, but um, it, it's going to be quite extensive. So I agree okay. that it makes right. sense to break now and make come back early. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, we're going to break a little early for lunch. Um, it, you'll be um, allowed to leave the jury room. Uh, you can go wherever you want for lunch. I'd ask you to Please wear your badges to and from your vehicles. Uh, that way people know that you're a juror. Uh, please don't talk to anybody. Please don't look at any social media, news reports, articles online. Again, same applies. Uh, we have to make sure we have an unbiased panel. Um, and um, 
We'll be back here. I'm going to have you back. Uh, we have some matters to attend to at 1 o'clock. Uh, I'll have you back here at 1.15, uh, hoping for a 1.30 start. So I'll have the attorneys back here at the same time. So uh, thank you. Uh, we're taking a recess. So please rise.